working toward a deal in Washington. President Biden set to meet with West Virginia Senator Shelley Moore Capito again today in an effort to strike a bipartisan deal on his massive infrastructure spending bill and higher taxes to pay for it. The White House setting this week as a deal to re uh, a deadline rather to reach a deal. This after the president rejected the Republicans' nearly one trillion dollar counteroffer on Friday. Joining me right now is Illinois Congressman, member of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, Rodney Davis. Congressman, it's great to see you today. Thanks very much for being here. Where does a deal on infrastructure stand? Well, it, it stands wherever the Biden administration wants to be on any particular day. I'm glad that President Biden is working with my good friend Shelley Moore Capito. But in the end, what the Senate Republicans have offered is historic funding, historic reinvestment and investment in our roads and our bridges. That's what we really need in this country. We just hope that the Democrats are allowed to actually have this negotiation move forward. Well, look, the president wants more than that. He doesn't want just infrastructure. You know that. Infrastructure is only about, what, 15, 18 percent of this spending package. He wants money for seniors. He wants money for the green economy and for uh, the EPA. Uh, where is this going? We know that Joe Manchin is pushing back, and we know that the president does not have the full support that he needs in order to get this through uh, on the Democrat side. And, of course, we know that there's no support on the Republican side as well. Will this be dead on arrival? You know, we're going to have to see. I, I will tell you, Maria, I think President Biden is going to have to go back to his time as Senator Biden and realize that either he's going to have to take a deal or they're going to go at it alone. And that's what I think should scare the American people the most. If President Biden isn't willing to take historic investment in what all Americans would consider real infrastructure, you know, roads, bridges, waterways, ports, locks and dams, airports, and if they want to negotiate through a reconciliation process just with the far left of their party, whoa, that's going to be even more costly than what's being proposed now, and it will be less investment in what we would consider as true infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, Janet Yellen is trying to sell everybody on it. The Treasury Secretary told Bloomberg that Biden's plan for higher spending would be, quote, beneficial to the country, even if it means higher interest rates moving forward. She said a higher interest rate environment would be good from the Federal Reserve's point of view. Uh, is, she, <laughs> is she giving uh, comments and, you know, ideas to, to Jay Powell with this? She, she's saying that it would actually be a, a plus for society's point of view and the Fed's point of view here. Your thoughts on what she's messaging? Well, coming out of a pandemic, I think that's the worst thing we could hope for or higher interest rates and, and ever-increasing inflationary pressures. I think what we have to do is take a step back and wonder which economists are the Biden administration's listening to. I mean, remember the so-called experts over the last two months underestimated job creation by almost 75 percent. We've got to have some adults in the room, and I certainly hope that Larry Summers and others can have their voices heard even more loudly within the administration. Well, I think you make a great point. Larry Summers has been writing a lot in various op-eds about this out-of-control spending being a negative, and that's why we keep mentioning it, because he's a Democrat, and he, too, is poking holes in this. Let me bring in John Hilsenrath from The Wall Street Journal with us this morning. Go ahead, John. Well, I just wanted to say about uh, Janet Yellen talking about the Fed and interest rates. I find this really interesting, because Janet Yellen used to be the Fed chair. She knows all about the ideas of Fed independence and the administration not getting involved in what the Fed does. She talks to Jay Powell on a regular basis. The fact that she's saying interest rates would be a good uh, in increases would be a good thing suggests to me that perhaps they agree that we're going down that road. What I want to ask uh, the, the, the congressman is, how does he read the White House's intentions right now in terms of this infrastructure bill? when, on the one hand, they've got the potential for a trillion-dollar compromise with Republicans, are they going to—what do you, what do you think are the chances they'd actually take this? And if not, what does it tell you about how serious they are about negotiating with, with, with Republicans about anything? Well, yeah, I why actually would think— Why would they reject a $1 trillion bill? That's absolutely right, Chair Congressman. Great questions. Uh, I personally don't know why they rejected the last offer. Senator Capito and the Senate Republicans 
have been negotiating in very good faith with one of their former colleagues, somebody that they know wants to crack a deal. But the problem is, I don't know if, if the administration is going to be allowed to by Speaker Pelosi or Leader Schumer, who I believe both of them want to use the reconciliation process because they want to take every single far left priority, get it passed in a large overarching multi-trillion dollar bill that actually will be titled infrastructure, but should be titled raising taxes and fees on every American and passing the Green New Deal because they realize their time in charge is limited. I'm here in Texas right now, McAllen, Texas, 85% Hispanic, right on the border. I was down there watching the migrant surge just a few weeks ago. They elected a Republican mayor in an 85% Hispanic district. Republicans are going to win big in 2022, and they know it. But Congressman, if, yeah, if I, I may, I, this I is the there. part. This, this is the part I don't. Yeah, ahead, I don't John. understand. The, the, the Democrats still have reconciliation if they don't use it on an infrastructure bill. So I just don't understand what they're doing. If, like, they could get their trillion dollars and still do reconciliation on something, including taxes. So, A, I don't get it. And, B, how would you feel on the Republican side if they take your trillion and then turn around and raise taxes on a reconciliation bill uh, done through, you know, through some other, for some other set of, proposals like tax proposals. Well, I'm glad you asked how I'd feel about it. I certainly wouldn't like it, but instead we would actually be able to come together on an issue like infrastructure, which should be the most bipartisan issue we have in Washington, D.C. But here's, yeah. here's the problem we have. They have such small margins. If they wanted to run a tax bill without the infrastructure title through reconciliation, I don't think they'd get the votes. Yeah. Real quick, Congressman, I mean, look at the debt that we're faced with and this budget. He wants to spend $6 trillion on, on, on a budget uh, where you're not getting any extra money for Homeland Security, no increase for defense spending either, and yet the EPA gets an increase of 22 uh, percent in, in the Biden budget. Any thoughts on this budget? Well, this is, this is what happens when Republicans lose the White House and we lose the majorities. Because Democrats have many different priorities, and their priorities are not securing our border. They're not investing in real, true infrastructure like we talked about throughout this in the entire interview. Uh, we, we look forward to having this debate, but in the end, uh, we've got to take a step back and really put our country on a better fiscal path. And certainly, this administration, with the Democrats in charge of the House and the Senate, are not doing that. All right, we will leave it there. Congressman, we'll be watching all the negotiations. Thanks very much for being here, and certainly thank you for being there in McAllen, Texas, uh, watching the uh, developments at the border.